In this video, we're going to talk about ions. What exactly is an ion? A good example that I like to use is the aluminum ion. Aluminum has an atomic number of 13 and a mass number of 27. And let's compare it to an atom of aluminum. So on the left side, we have the ion, and on the right side, the atom. As you can see, an ion has an electrical charge. An atom is neutral. There is no charge. The question is why. Why are atoms neutral, but why do ions possess either a positive charge or a negative charge? A positively charged ion is known as a cation. A negatively charged ion is known as an anion. The atomic number is equal to number of protons. So the aluminum atom and the aluminum cation both possess 13 protons. However, an ion is different from an atom based on a number of electrons. To calculate the number of electrons is equal to the atomic number minus the charge. So in the case of the atom, 13 minus the charge of 0 is 13. For the ion, it's going to be 13 minus a charge of positive 3. So 13 minus 3 is 10. So the aluminum ion has 10 electrons. So as you can see, the reason why an atom is electrically neutral is because the number of protons and electrons are the same. But in an ion, the number of protons and electrons are different, and that's why there's a net charge. Every proton has a positive one charge, and an electron has a negative one charge. So if you add up the charges for the ion, you have a charge of positive 13 in the nucleus, and in the electron cloud, negative 10. If you add those numbers, you're going to get the net charge of the ion. If you do the same thing for the atom, you have 13 protons, so that's the charge of positive 13, 13 electrons, so that's the charge of negative 13. The net charge is zero. And that's why there's nothing on top here. And so the atom is electrically neutral. So ions differ from atoms based on the number of electrons. Whenever you have a substance with equal number of protons and electrons, it's neutral. When the protons and electrons are different, the substance will be charged. And in the case of an atom, it becomes an ion when they have different number of protons and electrons. Now let's look at another example. Let's use phosphorus. Actually, let's choose a different element. Let's use uh, sulfur. Sulfur has an atomic number of 16. Its mass number is usually 32. So here we're going to have the ion and on the left the atom. How many protons and electrons are in these two particles? The number of protons is equal to the atomic number. So both particles contain 16 protons. In an atom, the number of protons and electrons will always be the same. In the ion, you can calculate it by taking the atomic number 16 and subtracting it by the net charge. So 16 minus negative 2 is the same as 16 plus 2, which is 18. Whenever you have a negatively charged anion, the number of electrons will be greater than the number of protons, and that's why the net charge is negative. In the case of the last example, where we had a positively charged cation, there were more protons than electrons, and that's why the overall charge was positive. So for this particular ion, we have 16 protons with a net charge of positive 16 and 18 electrons. If we add these two numbers, this will give us the net charge of the ion, which is negative 2. So keep in mind, ions have different, number, different numbers of protons and electrons, but atoms, they have the same number of protons and electrons. Now let's work on some problems. Write the atomic symbol of each ion. So let's say if you're given the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. How can we write the atomic symbol? So feel free to pause the video 
and try this problem if you want to. So let's say if we have some element x. We have the atomic number z, the mass number, you can call it m or a. I'm going to call it m, m for mass. And then the charge, let's say the charge is c. z is always equal to the number of protons, that's the atomic number. The mass number is the sum of the protons and the neutrons. The charge is the difference between the protons and the electrons. The negative sign has to do with the fact that electrons are negatively charged. So you don't need to put another negative sign in this equation. So for part A, the number of protons is 15. So therefore, Z is 15. The number of neutrons is 16. So the mass number is going to be the protons plus the neutrons. So that's 15 plus 16, which is 31. Now the charge is going to be the difference between the protons and electrons. So it's 15 minus 18. So we're going to have a net charge of negative 3. Because there are more electrons than protons, we have a negatively charged anion. So right now we have element X with an atomic number 15, a mass number 31, and a charge of negative 3. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to identify element X. How can we do that? In order to identify the element, you need to use the periodic table. And you can identify it based on the atomic number or the number of protons. So what element has an atomic number of 15? If you look at the periodic table, there's going to be two numbers that you'll see. The atomic number is always the smaller of the two numbers. So phosphorus has an atomic number of 15. So this is the atomic symbol. It's 1531p minus 3. So that's how you can write the atomic symbol of an ion. Go ahead and try part B. Z, which is the number of protons, is 26. The mass number is going to be the protons plus the neutrons, so 26 plus 30, and so that's 56. Finally, we need to calculate the charge which is the protons minus the electrons. So 26 minus 23, that's positive 3. So because there are more protons than electrons, the net charge is positive. So we have a positively charged cation. So we got an atomic number of 26, a mass number 56, and a charge of positive 3. The last thing we need to do is um, we need to identify the element. So what element has an atomic number of 26? If you look at the periodic table, it's Fe, iron. So this is the ionic symbol of Fe. So now you know how to write it if given the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So here's another practice problem for you. What is the net charge of an ion with 29 protons, 34 neutrons, and 27 electrons. In order to find the net charge, all you need to do is take the difference between the number of protons and electrons. So we have 27 protons and 27, I mean 29 protons, I take that back, but 27 electrons. So 29 minus 27 is positive 2. So we have a positively charged cation since there are more protons than electrons. So here's another problem that you could try. How many electrons does an ion with 32 protons and the net charge of positive 4 possess? So let's begin with an equation. To calculate the number of electrons, we know it's equal to the atomic number minus the charge. And the atomic number is basically equal to the number of protons, which we already have. So in this example, there are 32 protons, and the charge is positive 4. So it's 32 minus 4, so it's 28. And since the charge is positive, there's going to be less electrons than protons. And so that's the answer. So if you have 32 protons and a charge of positive 4, you just got to do 32 minus 4 and get 28.
there's going to be four less electrons than protons if the charge is plus four. So that is it for this video, and thanks for watching.